I'm going to tell you why you should be excited about Intel's new APUs. Now, just hear me out, okay? It's kind of long, but I promise it's worth it. And I think you'll agree. So let's talk AMD news. Coming out of CES, Zen Plus, we got a date, April. Now, this is the 12 nanometer Ryzen refresh. Uh, it was originally uh, 14 nanometers. We also have Zen 2 possibly coming out sometime next year. Whole new architecture, and they, they're they going to shrink it down to 7 nanometers. That's crazy. For comparison, Intel's at 14 nanometers right now. Their next uh, Cannon Lake, that's going to be a 10 nanometer. Uh, Cannon Lake's supposed to have considerable performance gains, 25% I heard. Reductions in power consumption, obviously. They're having a supply chain problem now. Coffee Lake launch was a disaster. It was the vaporware. It was basically like Vega. You couldn't get it. Um, now, I'm, I'm confused why I keep hearing it's been pushed back because everything last year was rushed out. I, I don't know how they're going to pull that off with the lack of silicon and, and everything else. But they need to get it figured out. And I want to tell you why Intel is tripping out. So they lost a considerable part of the market share with Ryzen being so successful last year and, and Epic. Um, now, if you looked at the numbers, Intel still controls the lion's share, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a big market. So in the grand scheme of things, they took a considerable hit. And it's because of that loss of market share that I'm excited for these Ryzen APUs. AMD announced the Ryzen 3 2200G, which is a four-core, four-thread chip, clocked at a uh, base clock at 3.5 gigahertz, boosting to 3.7, and an eight compute unit Vega GPU integrated for $99. That is cheaper than the Ryzen 3 1200, but faster and has Vega integrated graphics. Now the other one they announced, which is a step up, the Ryzen 5 2400G, four core, eight thread chip, uh, base clock 3.6, boosting to 3.9. And this comes with an 11 compute unit uh, integrated Vega chip. AMD has shown some performance numbers for both APUs. Okay, now get this. This is from AMD. Okay. The Ryzen 2400G. This is their data, remember. They have that being comparable or as fast as an i5-8400 with a GT1030. This makes the Ryzen 5 2400G a good $100 cheaper for the same supposed performance. And to make that hurt even worse, it's still hard to get an 8400 at a decent price. It gets better. These APUs also overclock and overclock very well. A demo at CES has the Ryzen 5 2400G hitting 1750 megahertz on the GPU with standard air cooling. Combine that with fast memory. This led to a near 40% uplift in the 3D, uh, the Fire Strike performance. Intel cannot compete with that. We know this. They've already done the old, you know, if you can't beat them, join them type of deal with the Intel Mobile with the Vega graphics. And this means Intel stands to lose even more market share now on the mobile side of things. So that's mobile, desktop, server. They've lost some, I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, we can already thank the Ryzen 3 for giving us affordable quad cores. And, and that led Intel to answer back and deliver us the quad core i3s that were awesome. They performed so well. I mean, we had 8350Ks outperforming 7700Ks and certain benchmarks. Mind blowing. AMD's new little slogan is AMD everywhere. And they are literally going to be everywhere. They've made an impact in desktop. They've made an impact with Epic on the server side. Now we're seeing all these new Apple computers with the RX Vega cards in them. So what is Intel going to do? I think they have to stick with what they're good at. I think they have to try to dominate in other sectors to make up for that loss in market share. Now, hopefully they do this in the desktop arena, which is going to be tough. Ryzen Plus coming out, but Cannon Lake, 10 nanometers, knock it out of the park. Focus on the IPCs. That's what you're good at. That's always been, you know, the thing that sets you apart from AMD. And, and make that 25% rumor true. 8,700K owners are, are going to be upset, but you get screwed when you buy the flagship every year. I think it's going to happen this year, too, with Cannon Lake. If these 8,700K owners can upgrade to something that's 25% better and you don't try to screw them over on price, I think it would be 
an easy pill to swallow if you make it bad ass. Not none of this 6700K to 7700K, like a significant jump and, um, you know, make us some, and, and that scales down too. When the ceiling is that much higher, that means the floor is going to be that much higher too. And you saw what they did when they answered back to the Ryzen 3s with their i3s. I, I'm a big fan of those uh, Coffee Lake i3s. But guys, those are my thoughts. Bottom line, 2018 is going to be phenomenal. Last year was like the best year in a long time since we got like the, the quad cores, I think, or the core twos. But what do you think? I mean, no matter what team you're on, it's going to be a great year in 2018. But let me know below. Would you buy, if you 8700K owners, would you buy this new flagship chip if it's 25% better? Or would you stay? Let me know below, guys. I will be definitely paying attention to what else comes out of CES. So stay tuned.